Despite the ultimate discovery in 2002, this massive ore body has remained dormant due to prolonged legal battles involving charges of corruption and bribery for securing mining rights. No doubt, the Simandu iron ore deposit located in the Simandu mountain range in southeastern Guinea is the world's biggest untapped high-grade iron ore deposit. With all the countries having their eyes on the way to combine it with themselves, the tech freaks have now come up with their interest in the ores. Yes, China is on the path to something big. Want to know? Then follow us till the end. China is close to giving the go-ahead for some of its biggest state-owned companies to develop the giant Simando iron ore mine in Guinea, potentially paving the way for the project to be built after years of legal wrangling. China is increasing its stake in Guinea's massive Simandu iron ore mine, which it sees as critical, and it seeks to lessen reliance on Australian ore amid geopolitical tensions. The mine located in southern Guinea's Zerekore region is reported to have the world's largest undiscovered high-quality iron ore resource, with an estimated 2.4 billion tons. The deposits have attracted Chinese corporations, notably the country's largest iron and steel producer, China Biao Steel Group. Biao inked an agreement in September with the Society Minere di Boke SMB winning consortium Simandu to develop blocks 1 and 2 of the Simandu North project. The group is made up of Singaporean Shipowner winning international group, Chinese aluminum producer Shangdong Weichiao, and Guinea transport and logistics firm United Mining Suppliers International. Even though commercial-scale quantities of high-grade iron ore were proven in 2002, the Simandu mine has been undeveloped due to the lack of a railway line to transport the ore from a remote corner of Guinea to the sea for export. Biao is presently leading a group that plans to invest an unknown sum in the SMB winning consortium to acquire 49% ownership in its two subsidiaries, WCS InfraCo for infrastructure development, and WCS MineCo for mine development. Subject to regulatory permission, the Chinese company intends to grow its stake in WCS MineCo to 51% once the mine is operational. More than a trillion dollars in iron ore is hidden in Guinea's Simandu Mountains, enough to make steel for 100,000 Empire State buildings. In other words, that would be enough to construct all of China's airports, skyscrapers, cargo ships, and missiles for seven years. A partnership of Chinese connected enterprises is mining the isolated mountain range as part of the country's effort to generate new natural resource streams. It's also an effort to lessen dependency on Australia, which President Xi Jinping has described as a strategic weakness. However, this effort threatens one of Africa's most biologically diverse ecosystems as well as at least 450 villages, according to Eric Hedborg, Chief Analyst at Commodities Consultancy CRU Group Biao can be viewed as a representative of the Chinese steel sector because it is China's largest steel maker and a state-owned corporation. With the company taking an interest in Simandu, it is clear that the project has gained significant interest from the Chinese steel industry and the Chinese authorities. How do you think this would help other nations if there's construction help from China? Do you really think the smarts are as helpful as they show? You know what I mean? Headwork stated that this would help to diversify iron ore supplies from China and other regions as Australia accounts for 60% of global exports and Brazil accounts for 20%. He claimed that the two countries contributed roughly 85% of China's iron ore. China wants to diversify its iron ore supply, and this is seen as a good opportunity to do so. Meanwhile, the rights to the Simandu mines, Southern Blocks 3 and 4 are held by the Anglo-Australian multinational Rio Tinto through Simfer, of which the Guinea government owns 15%. Years of ownership issues and slow development on the 650-kilometer, that's 400-mile, railway needed to deliver the ore to Guinean ports have slowed the Simandu mine project. After growing frustrated with the project's investors, Guinea's junta, which took power in a coup in September 2021, ceased activities at the mine in March last year, claiming that the country needed to gain more money from its mining resources. The Guinean government described the deal, which was signed on December 22nd, as an important milestone since it will allow the partners to begin the process of funding the project, which is anticipated to cost roughly $15 billion. 
The participation of Biao, whose arrival at the negotiating tables was welcomed by all stakeholders, stated Guinea's Directorate of Communication and Information in a statement. The infrastructure must be finished by December 31, 2024 and commissioned by March 13, 2025, according to the agreement. The Chinese, French and the Singaporean interests won a $14 billion tender to develop part of Guinea's Simandu Iron Ore project, edging out Australia's Fortescue Metal Group. What print would it leave on the Australian government? Let's know! Guide Moore, a senior policy fellow at the Center for Global Development and former Liberian Minister of Public Works, said the investors and Junta look to have found a solution to the concerns that led to the project's suspension early last year. Once the proposed Simandu mine in Guinea is operational, which may happen as soon as 2025, there is little doubt that its high-quality ores will grab market share from Australia and provide enough additional supply to bring prices down. But anyone who believes that the much-touted Guinea project or China's developing steel industry strategies general is all about making iron ore cheaper for local industry is missing the point. The thought of China discovering alternatives to Australian iron ore generates heart palpitations in Perth, Canberra and everywhere in between. China Inc. can be divided and tribal in ways that few outsiders recognize. And the Chinese and other investors in the project will want to make a lot of money, just as Australian miners are now. The same is true for the government of Guinea. If it believes its resources are being sold at a loss to subsidize Chinese industry, it can nationalize the project and sell the ore on the free market. This leads us to the actual cause of heightened urgency, to get the mine up and operating, which is geopolitics and the breakdown of bilateral relations between China and Australia. Simandu, when viewed from that perspective, is about ensuring the supply of a critical resource rather than lowering its price. For years, the Chinese have privately expressed concerns to their Australian colleagues about what would happen to iron ore shipments in the case of a regional military war, generally invoking Taiwan. Such a dispute was once considered academic. It isn't at least not in the medium term. The Morrison government has studiously avoided bringing up in public the possibility of Canberra using the supply of iron ore and other commodities as diplomatic bargaining chips. Backbenchers in the coalition have not been so reserved. Former Resources Minister Matt Canavan, who bills himself as the miner's friend, proposed in December that China be made to pay the price for its trade penalties against Australia by placing a tariff on iron ore shipments. With Australia currently supplying around 60% of the iron ore used in steel production in China, any sane Chinese official would be concerned about the perils of overdependence not only on a single country, but on one of America's closest regional friends. If those same Chinese officials had a nuanced understanding of Australian history, they would have taken note of Scott Morrison's speech in July 2020, when he mentioned how the 1930s loomed over Canberra's diplomatic calculations. This takes us to the end. We'll see you at the next one.